Welcome to lecture number 1 of our 40 gate installation series where we install a 40 gate firewall on our network step by step. And today's topic is 40 gates, ports and LEDs. So in this video we will have a look at the different 40 gate firewall categories that Fortinet has to offer. We will then see the physical aspects of our 40 gate 60E firewall. Essentially, we will be understanding the physical interfaces and how they work. Lastly, we will have a look at the LED lights and their meanings in our 48 firewall. Hello there and welcome to the first lecture of the series. In this lecture, we're going to be looking at our firewall physically. But before we go towards the firewall physically and see all the ports and stuff, let's just go over to the 48 uh, Fortinet's website and try to see the models that they have. Now, if you have a specific need, you have to come here before you even place an order or um, um, like pitching a client for a specific firewall because each firewall has its own, you know, like attributes and everything and each client has his own needs. So uh, they have these categories, uh, the data center firewalls, the virtual machines, entry level, mid range, high end, ultra high end and chases. Now um, the firewall we're going to be deploying is of entry level. So ever, if I were to go to the entry level firewalls, I can see all these uh, small teeny mini firewalls that I have over here. And this is our firewall that we have at our disposal. It's 4860E. So if you really want to go deep and see what 40 gate 60 e really does and uh, what are the specifications because they're, this is kind of like the cliff notes of what it does. Threat protection with a throughput of 200 megabits per second, SSL inspection, throughput again, and all that stuff. Uh, session is really important. And then we have these network interfaces, so they all depend on your network infrastructure, whatever you have at your disposal. So we've got the data sheet of 4860E downloaded. Now let's just hop on towards the data sheet and see what we have over here. Um, so as you can see, this is a firewall we're going to be um, configuring and replacing in our home environment. And um, these are all the specs if you really want to go deep and all the ports and everything. Uh, we are going to be jumping um, towards our mobile you know, video and, and we're going to be discussing the ports um, and what does each port does and the LED lights that it has, how does it function. Uh, but if you want to go into the specifications like IPS throughput, firewall throughput, latency and all that, you have to go through this data sheet first for any firewall that you choose and then place the order. If you are a customer or if you're a vendor and you're pitching this to the customer, so you need those needs first. So let's jump on to our 40 gig firewall now and see the physical ports and stuff over there. Okay, so we have this 40 gig a uh, firewall with us and it's 40 gate 60e that is the exact model that we were looking at right now and um, it has these LED ports uh, that will light up once we plug the power in and this is a rear end uh, basically on which you have these ports and this is the upper end um, on which it has some instructions uh, on how to connect to this 40 gate firewalls for administrators who don't have actually uh, any idea how to do it. So they're basically telling us that per connect to port one with your Ethernet cable and uh, go to bra go to your browser and type in 192.168.1.99 and the password username is admin and there is no password so the password will be blank. And if you want to configure with 40 yard of oh, 40 cloud, sorry, uh, that then you have to go to 40cloud.com and add the device. But your van port should have internet access. So if it's a new deployment and you don't have any 40 cloud account, you can actually create an account and add this 40 net device with a 40 cloud key. And if you have any licenses associated with this this specific 40 uh, guard. Um, then it has this, uh, uh, this serial number over here. Um, 
it has licenses binded with this serial number so if you can see clearly so it's going to pick those licenses as well so 40 cloud is really important even if you don't want to configure it with 40 cloud you do need to register it uh with the 40 cloud um in order to get the licenses okay so now going on towards the ports that we have here at our disposal first of all the dc adapter um it comes with this um, <clears throat> adapter, it's a small adapter. It's not like your laptops and everything, it's really small. Um, <clears throat> this is the port, if you could see, mm, kind of different from what you normally get in, in devices. So I just plug it in so that it comes up. And to see the status, you have to uh, actually see uh, in front if the LED lights are um, on or, or not so as you can see this is the power LED that's turned on and this is the uh, uh, 40 gate um, logo okay so what do we have next is a USB port uh, that's good if you want to upload something or download something or get the backup in the USB you could do that uh, then we have a console port, which we all always have in devices. Uh, we've, we've been having this console port on almost every device. Okay, then we have two VAN interfaces, WAN 1 and WAN 2, and a DMZ and 7 uh, LAN ports. Now, these LAN ports that you see from 1 to 7 are kind of like bundled together, and they have like one subnet. A 192.168.1.0 slash 24. So any port you plug it in, uh, you basically come on to the network of 192.168.1.0 slash 24, and they have a DHCP enabled. So uh, you get the IP address as well. So they try to make it as plug and play as possible. And then we have these WAN ports. Uh, WAN ports are DHCP clients. Uh, meaning if you have internet access supposedly I have internet access on um, This cable that is coming from the, the switch on the back end uh, as you can see it's the 2960 that I am using uh, for my labs and stuff uh, If it has internet access, I could actually connect this uh, cable um, into one of the vans and it, it'll get an IP address just like a laptop or any device and that is con considered a WAN port. So uh, the thing is, it can have two WAN ports. So you could have two uplinks coming in, uh, one from a different ISP or from a different switch, and another from a different switch off a different subnet. So you could just plug that in, and it'll get an IP address, and it'll start uh, its thing. I mean, it's going to connect to to the internet. You could actually do that. So. That's how much it's plug and play. But the problem is if you have PPPoE or you have static IP addresses, you have to really configure them. You have to go into the GUI or CLI and configure those IP addresses. So the, they kind of like make it plug and play. Every vendor does, but there's always something you have to do manually. And then they have this little doodad called the DMZ interface, and they actually have a subnet over here. I'm not sure about the DHCP, but it's 10.10.10.0 slash 24 subnet that they already have configured for you. So you can actually have a downstream server switch or a server VLAN, um, and you could have your servers with IP addresses ranging from 10.10.10.0 slash 24. Uh, and you can create policies uh, according to that. Obviously, you're not going to be doing that. Now, one thing I really want to emphasize here that people get really confused that VAN2, VAN1, DMZ, they don't really mean, or even these ports, they don't really mean that you have to and you must connect the VAN interfaces on them. You can actually change them if you want. Um, but the problem is that their names are hard-coded. I haven't actually figure out a way to change the hard coded name. If you guys have, uh, you can leave a link, uh, I mean, leave a comment in the de description if you could change WAN1 or WAN2 names 
uh, the default names what they have. So that will be really good. So you can name them whatever you want. You can name them in aliases, but um, it's not th that kind of thing because these names show up. But the thing is, the what I'm trying to emphasize here that you can use them for whatever you want. You can configure them. They just try to make it a plug and play. So it 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 generally uh, lo looks like you have to plug in. Really have to plug in the one one and one two on these specific ports, and you have to have lands here. You cannot do anything else. You can you can get to really flexible. And I have actually used the, the DMZ for a third ISP in one of my deployments recently. So you could actually do that, that's not an issue. Okay, the last thing that we're gonna be going through physically are these LEDs that you see. Uh, one is the power LED, if I were to uh, zoom in a little bit. Power LED, the status LED, and the high availability or HA LED, which is obviously off because I don't have any HA. Um, that would be if I had two uh, 40 gig firewalls, but we ha don't have that. If you want to see how that works, I could actually make um, um, DNS3 or ENG Lab and, and show you how that works. Now on this side, you see all of those port numbering that you saw on the back end or here. We saw port 1 to 7, DMZ went and went 2, went 1 and went 2. Uh, you can actually see those ports over here and their LEDs over here. Um, 1 to 7, DMZ WAN 1 and WAN 2. As you can see that. I hope you can see it clearly. I'm not a, a video guy actually. I don't have a lot of experience in uh, making videos from my phone or any device. So sorry if I mess up a little bit here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, the first thing that I'm going to be showing you is... Uh, the speed and the link. Now we're gonna look at the speed. Now I have um, an Ethernet cable coming from a switch which has all of these ports and at fast Ethernet. So 100 megabits per second. So I'm gonna plug uh, this guy into five, plugging it in. And <clears throat> straight away you see an amber light coming down, a, a green light on the link or status and an amber light coming down on the speed. Now the amber light basically means it's a hundred megabits per second link, which is a fast ethernet link. So people do get confused with the amber link, like it's something is wrong with this uh, cable or something, but it's not. Now we have another um, cable coming in that's gigabit ethernet. So let's plug that in. Again, sorry about my video um, expertise. So as you can see, I just plugged it in, it turned green, and the speed is also green. Now that indicates that it's a gigabit Ethernet, okay? So um, if I were to switch these ports, like I would uh, connect the gigabit to uh, that one, uh, the fifth one, which was FOSS Ethernet previously, and place, uh, plug this FOSS Ethernet into six, they're gonna be inverted, okay? So as you can see, now the fifth one is green. So it's on gigabit ethernet now, and that one is on fast ethernet. So that was a physical demonstration of our 40 gate 60E before we go ahead and deploy this in our home network. Um, so now we're gonna be connecting to port one in our next lecture and uh, getting an IP address from the series of 192.168.1.0 24 and going to be configuring it via GUI. Well, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.